Yeah, he's on my turnaround for so long. Hello and welcome to the ninth and final edition of My Ideal Ghana, a discussion that scopes out the Ghana we would like to see if we had a blank slate, a clean sheet, a notepad, a fresh page with no inhibitions. My name is Albert Okran, welcoming you on behalf of Springboard's Virtual Academic Board, comprising Comfort, Matthew, Priscilla, Yao, Ima and Papayao. It's exactly 32 days to the end of what has been a, an amazing year, 2020, and we thank God for every single blessing we've enjoyed this year. On this fateful day, I hereby matriculate you into a week in which you will excel in everything you touch, be it spiritual, financial, socioeconomic, professional, every single area of your life may you excel and if you will do what is required just simply say amen right so for the past eight weeks here on springboard we've been exploring what the ideal ghana would look like and the word ideal simply stands for something that satisfies one's conception of what is perfect or most suitable desirable and every other word in between. Tonight, we close with a very special group of people. There are four, but I have two of them here, and I love the fact that they are stars in their own rights. So, on the 8th of October, is that the correct date? Yes, please. I'm sure you never, never, never forget that date. <laughs> Presec won the science and maths quiz for the sixth time, and the hashtag six finally comes home or something like that, began to trend. And we watched as four amazing young men worked together to win the highly coveted National Science and Maths Quiz. Today, after having heard from the adults, let's bring on the young adults to find out what kind of Ghana would they love to have. I have here in the studio two of the, the, the young men who took the nation by storm in the National Science and Maths quiz, representing Presec, but now they've graduated. First, Benjamin Inketia Kwanza. Ben, good to see you. Good to see you too. Right, and then <laughs> Daniel Kekeli Gapeto. Dan, good to see you. Good to see you too. This is not a science quiz. This is a, a, just a conversation. <laughs> we don't have your colleagues here, um, Isaac, Jamfi, and, and, and Faith Cyril, but you are representing them big time. We'll be joined along the line by their, their coach, and we'll find out what it takes to coach a team of brilliant young people like this. So you were given 14 thematic areas to consider. Did you find it difficult to choose three out of them? Do you find it difficult? Not really. Why? Those three stood out. Those three stood out for you? I saw them, I knew I just had to. Speak about I'll it. find out whether you use a formula. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What about you, Ben? Was it difficult to choose? Yeah, a bit. A bit. But Why you wanted to choose all of them? <laughs> More than three. But More than yeah. three. I'll find out which ones you didn't choose. But tell me, which ones did you choose, um, um, Benjamin? Oh, I chose education, science and technology, and healthcare. Education, I was expecting. Science and technology, I was expecting. Okay. Healthcare. I'm, 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 well, let me find out first from uh, Daniel which ones he chose, and then I'll find out whether it was influenced by your career aspirations. <laughs> Daniel, which ones did you choose? I chose education, okay, science and technology, and you did education, science and technology, and sports. Sports, yes. So you know, if I had been asked to choose for you, I would have chosen the first two without a doubt, especially the second one. In fact, I would have chosen it for you. <laughs> I, I was expecting to hear your thoughts about science and tech and what, what you would like to see in the country. So, what influenced your choice um, of the third one? As for the first two, I, I think it's constant. What influenced the choice of healthcare? Healthcare. Well, um, some experiences I've had. Personal experience? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Daniel? Sports. Uh, I'm a diehard sports person. I you, you play or you watch? Mostly watching, but I try to play when I get the chance to. Which one do you play? Soccer. Soccer? Yes, please. And which team do you support? Yeah, Barcelona. Oh, and then in Ghana? 
in Ghana. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> so, bring back your love team. Please, you have one more convert you should win here because he doesn't have a Ghanaian team that he supports. And that tells you that we have not done our work well. I support Accra as a folk, the wow. only team in Ghana. Do you, do you support a Ghanaian team? Well, when I was a kid, but now I don't really follow. Which one we support when you were a kid? Kotoko. Oh, when we close, we'll talk. Oh. You must all come to hearts. <laughs> سأخبر أمك So put a mask on or else we'll tell your mom Your smartphone is just a phone and so you have the Advantage app This is your power to know more and do more With a few instructions and a tap to send you will be sorted out within minutes Take advantage of our app, buy a policy from any of our subsidiaries, request for a quote, make a claim and check your statement. What's more, you can also get health tips, traffic information and find garages and more. Download the Advantage app on Google Play and Apple Store now. Take advantage. Here's to over 95 years of trust. Enterprise. Your advantage. <laughs> Right, so let's start with your conversations. Um, Daniel, which would lead for you? Which one will be your big one? Education. You will lead education. Yes. Please. Tell me, what's your big point on education, Daniel? Gapoto. My big point on education would be that we need to adjust. I feel that we need to adjust our curriculum and the way teaching and learning is done in Ghana. What should we do differently? Well, in terms of our curriculum, what, what we learn in school, I feel that some of the, thing, the, things, we, the things we learn in class are a bit outdated. Really? Yeah. Um, also, we need to look at more practical approaches to learning and ap applying what we learn in class in our lives and also in our fields of work wherever we find ourselves after school. I interviewed Dr. Alfred Patrick Adakwe last week. He was alluding to the same point. He said he did his doctorate in music, music theory and, 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 and some other part of music. And he was saying that his favorite lecturer or his favorite supervisor was the one who taught him the music in Chi. And then also deliberately used Ghanaian examples instead of the well-known global examples to bring home the points. Would you say that that relates to the style of teaching issue that you mentioned? Yes, it does. Apart from, it does relate to what I mentioned. Right. Yeah, because I feel that we should be able to relate what we learn in class to our environment, the things around us, especially from a scientific point of view. Science is basically about observation. You see the smile so, on your face when you talk about science. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's amazing when you, when you love something, when you love something you talk about, it's a smile comes to your face. Let me find out about what you call outdated. What are some of the things we are learning that you think are outdated? Um, I believe maybe some of the methods we use um, there are sometimes when you learn something in class, um, methods that are used to teach them, um, examples that are stated in the textbooks. You don't like slide rule? Pardon? You don't like slide rule? <laughs> oh, I do. Some of them are quite good. But sometimes when you go on the internet, you on YouTube, other sites, you see more refined examples of the, basically the same things you are learning, but in um, better and more refined do, 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 do you find that when I was in school, I, I thought that sometimes the teachers deliberately made the thing difficult for you so you would appreciate it. Do you find that we still do that? No. I know Mr. Fram is looking, but don't mind it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think teachers deliberately make um, the, whatever they are teaching difficult so that for us to appreciate it because I believe the joy of a teacher should be in um, his, his or her students understanding whatever he or she is teaching and being able to apply it well. To the so application is big for you. Let me come to you, um, 
Benjamin. Benjamin. Daniel says we should adjust our curriculum uh, the way we teach and then we should the way learning is done it should be more practical and applicable. What would be your lead one? Would it be education, science, technology, or it would be the third one you choose, which um, which is healthcare? Which one would you lead with? It would be education. Education, right. Yeah. So what's your big point, Daniel Benjamin Kwanza? Well, my big point on education would be um, to, you see, most of the times in class, there's maybe a teacher who has been there for over seven, eight years, and the same notes he used for the people that came eight years ago is the same thing that he's using at the moment, and it's not adjusted to fit where, where the world is going at the moment. Maybe something you learned eight years ago, you are still using it, but the world is advancing, going forward. So I feel like the teachers should go all out, should be more read on the same topic they are teaching, because it's when you really understand it that you can teach somebody to adapt. But if you understand it very, I'm not saying the teachers don't have understanding, but there's always a bigger understanding you can have and more refined way of teaching people that will fit their environment. For example, when the COVID came, if you um, used what you learned about viruses in the SHS, you can't um, provide a suitable solution for the virus. But if you keep on reading around it and updating yourself, yeah, I think it will be better that we update ourselves on what is really modern in education. Benjamin, this is very interesting because when we were in the university, there was, there was, this, this, there was this notion that the easy way around for teaching was to insist that the students produce your notes, produce what you tell them. If you go and bring anything that is outside what the lecturer is teaching, they will mark you down. <laughs> so it's discouraging you are going to bring any wild, wild theories. You are saying that the in the teaching, the notes must be updated consistently. Yes. A friend of mine said he brought his father's, I won't, I won't mention the subject it was, <laughs> but in the, in the University of Ghana, he brought his father's notes mm -hmm. in one of the social sciences and he, the notes his father used for that subject he brought it when he was coming to first year and it was the same <laughs> whether it's true or not that's what he said I mean, but that's that fits into the point that you're making yeah right if you just join us this is springboard of virtual university and I, have, I get to have two very amazing young men here benjamin kwanza and daniel gapeto of formerly of presec they just completed and they are two of the people who spearheaded the sixth onslaught on the national science and maths quiz if you're watching on online you will find that the trophy is still right here in front of me and just in case you think i'm the one who won it i, I will shift it a little so you see that the, it's actually a trophy for the two young men their colleagues their school their coach and everyone and let me salute prime time for this brilliant innovation salute the entire production team and the quiz mistresses led by our own friend, uh, Dr. Kaufman, Elsie Kaufman, and all those who contributed to making this program, this national science and maths quiz, what it has become in this, in this country. Um, let's go to your second point that you chose. We'll talk about the science and maths quiz when we come back on the break, but let's find out your second point about the, the ideal Ghana. You chose education first. What's the second one? Science and technology. So it, it's in the order of importance for you? Yes. Please. Okay, so Daniel, what was your sec what's your second big point on science and tech? Science and technology. I, I feel Tell that you. we should make the, the science and technology, the environment in Ghana should be more lucrative for those involved in the sciences and also in the technological um, field. We shouldn't always have experts looking for greener pastures abroad. And right now, it's like when you want to do some courses, they tell you that don't do this course in Ghana. Are you going that to do this? Well, <laughs> um, we are still trusting uh, God. Trusting God. We'll see what, what, what course do you want to do? I'd like to pursue electrical engineering. Electrical engineering is done, is done here, yes, please. very, very much here. Yes, please. So if you got a chance to get abroad, it will be because it was by choice. But what kind of courses do people want to do that they can't find here? Not that they can't find here. They, those courses, most of them are also offered here. Maybe maybe some of them, I mean, yeah. to be very fair, maybe aeronautical engineering or some of those it's, very complex ones may not be here, but... Yeah, I think aerospace. It's, it's in, it's, I know it's offered in Ghana, but... It's offered in Ghana, yeah. yeah. How but most people space? would like to 
<laughs> go, um, has the lecture been paid for? Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> Most people would like to do such course, uh, courses abroad than because of the practical Canada. yes please. exposure. Okay, yeah. okay. So you're saying that the environment must be more lucrative for science and technology people. Yeah. More incentives. More incentives. Okay. Yes. Why? To so retain professionals, to retain the those with the technical know-how in the country, so that we don't lose their talents to foreign economies. Let me ask you, why do you think more science and tech? available or more experts will benefit the country? Why, why defend, make a case for science and tech? Science, more science and tech people uh, that uh, in the country, more science and tech experts actually, would benefit the country in so many ways. We wouldn't have to import so many things. Uh, we would now start exporting some of these things and if we have the best of the best in the country. We can make a brands, uh, we can have brands originating from Ghana that are competitive on the global scale. We talk of the, we are talking of the iPhones and the Samsungs that we import from countries. The countries where that are exporting them are making a lot of money. But here we are, uh, we are having this consumer mindset. We are feeding off their, um, what they are producing. And in the end, we are losing out on a lot. Fantastic. So you think, would you like to have your name against a, a discovery one of these days? Why not? <laughs> have you started thinking about what it is you'd like to come up with? <laughs> um, not yet, but in the future, we'll start. In the future. Please look out for the name Daniel Gakpeto, because very soon, something we patented against his name <laughs> as the discoverer, the Einstein of our time. Yeah. Let me come to you, Benjamin Kwanza. What will be your second point? Will you also be science and tech? Yes, please. All right. So what's your big idea? <laughs> My big idea is that, um, you see, sometimes people are discouraged from doing science and technology because okay. of how it is made to look in Ghana. But they, uh, we have... Zifinchim. Would come again? Zifinchim. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, because um, they will make you feel like um, when you go into science and technology, there's not really much money associated with it. But um, we have bright minds in Ghana. And for, uh, when my dad sent me to his workplace, VRE, he, he sent me to the MIS department. And the guys there are very sharp. They can even teach you how to get into your phone when you are locked out. Really? Yes, there's something called the back door. A lot of things that we, we knew not of. So if these people are giving more... Um, exposure, giving more um, help, we can make Ghana better. They can discover more things. Like in a few years to come, Ghana can become a high, um, can go higher in the technological field. I feel, yeah. Wow. So when you close, you show me how to get into my phone when I'm locked out. It's very important. <laughs> the back door to my phone and my television and everything else in between. All right, so Ben Kwasa says, let's make science and tech more exciting and change the perception that there's no money. Is, is, is there money in it? Oh, I think there is, yes. There is a, we'll find it together. Mm, we'll find it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, so if you just joined us, this is Springboard, your virtual university, hanging out with two of the, um, the preset team that lifted the sixth science and national science and maths quiz uh, prize for their institution, Daniel Gapetto and Benjamin Kwanza. And they are telling me their thoughts so far on education and also on science and technology. We'll later be joined by their coach who will tell us how to raise more centers of excellence in science across the country. If you are listening to your school, your school science teacher is around, call them and tell them, listen, so you can produce at least three, three trophies for our school if you have not had one or two so far. Because Charlie, I not yeah, it's serious. All right, let me come back and ask um, Daniel for your third point on the ideal Ghana. You want to see adjusted curriculum improvement in the way science is taught and you want to and, and learn and you want to see more application of the learnings on science and technology you are seeing that the environment must make it more conducive for people to take on science and maths with more incentives and in the end we will import less and produce more what's the third point sports sports ah the barcelona boy okay <laughs> sports what do you want to see um, i would like to See Ghana being more competitive in some global in uh, global competitions, not just football, but other sporting events like athletics and um, swimming and 
the other table tennis, all those sporting events. Would you like Ghana to host um, host events? Yes, well, um, in the future, I would like Ghana to host some of these events. When I was, when I was in school, I mean, I don't know if that is, the situation pertains, but it was almost like anyone who was in science and technology was so prim and proper and was a shark or nerd and never went to the pitch, never did, never did sports. Is, is, there, is, it, is there a correlation, a negative correlation between science and sports? Not necessarily. You can be a science person and still be interested in sports, still actively participate in sports. And have a social the, life? Yes. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, so, apart, from, apart, from, apart from trying to play football sometimes, what, what, what else do you do when you want to wind down? Um, Don't tell me you read a science magazine. I, and, um, I watch movies, I play video games. Science um, science fiction movies or? Oh, or any type of movie. Really? Yes, please. Okay. You play video games? Yes, please. All right. Hmm. All right. <laughs> Interesting. So that's your third point. You want Ghana to be more competitive in athletics, swimming, TT, and other sports, not just football? Yes, please. Okay, let me come to you. Um, Benjamin Kwanza, what would be your third point? Healthcare. Healthcare? Yeah. Do you have career aspirations that are connected to healthcare? Well, yeah. <laughs> what do you want to be? A medical doctor. All right, all right. So I got it right. Your third choice is influenced by your career aspirations. Okay. So you want to become Dr. Benjamin Kwanza? Yeah. Okay. Why? What do you want? What do you want to see? The reason I chose healthcare is not necessarily because I want to be a doctor, but some experiences I've had at right. the hospital. Well, you see, if you come to a hospital and you are sick, I wouldn't want to be at the hospital to be sick. So if the nurses too don't want me to be there, I don't want to be there more. So you need to be nice to the patient. Right. Do this, do that. But if you are not interested in your job, you can't put the, <laughs> your anger on me. You, you get it. So I feel like healthcare, the nurses and the staff should be more nice to the patients because um, even your demeanor to the patients can affect how fast the healing process will take place because um, being nice to someone can facilitate healing and I feel like if you are going to the healthcare you should really be motivated by to see people get well rather than see it as um, um, I want to be a doctor so the fame in it no your passion should be to see the people get well because at a point in time you'll be tired but we'll call you for the work so if it's about just being a doctor you might want to shake the responsibility but if it's your real passion is to see people get well, you come to their aid. So I feel like healthcare should be more um, driven by your passion for it rather than the fame of being a doctor or a healthcare personnel. Dr. <laughs> Benjamin Kwanza, I hear the thing that annoys you in life often becomes your motivation, the things that excite you, but also the things that annoy you can become your motivation for excellence. So having seen what you don't like, mm -hmm. what kind of doctor will we have in a few years time when Dr. <laughs> Benjamin Kwanza graduates? <laughs> tell me, tell me, what kind of doctor will you be? Oh, a doctor whose um, health care facilities are on point. Like we, we should invest much more also in the facilities because it should, it would facilitate the um, health care procedure. And, if you're a nurse and um, I get several complaints that I've been rude to the patients. <laughs> yeah. So um, the personnel, the workplace, the health worker should learn how to be handle, learn how to handle patients very well. Okay. Yes. So your concern, um, Benjamin, is influenced by your own pain, your own experience. You're mm -hmm. saying that. If you had your own way, the ideal Ghana, healthcare personnel will love their job and yes. they'll be in compassion. Yes. And it's because of your own personal experience. But the good <laughs> thing is that you get a chance to correct that when you become a doctor. Yes, please. And that is why I'm excited about this. All right, so those are the three points from my guests, Daniel Gapetto and Benjamin Kwanza, of, um, alumni of Presec, the immediate past batch, um, who were in the National Science and Maths Quiz winning team. If you know, uh, if you've been following my Ideal Ghana series, you know that we, this is our ninth edition. And we decided to climax it with young people who will be the ones running this country 
uh, in the in the years ahead of us, finding out the kind of Ghana they will redesign when we are a bit older and they are in charge. So in my ideal Ghana so far, we've had eight editions featuring in the first one, Dr. Isi Ansan and Kujo Adai Mensa. In the second one, Mame Awinado Kanyeregi and Maximus Ametago. In the third one, Professor H. Kwesi Prempe and Kina Likimani. In the fourth one, Amalati and Chief Mumen. Edition five had Bishop Gideon Titi Ofer and A.C. Anosaki. Edition six, Professor Nanaba Apia Amfo and Nana Ansakwao the fourth. The seventh, Professor Justice Baoli and Edith Yubukeri. And then the last one, the blockbuster with Nana. I said Nana. Of course, it's also Nana. Ochiang Kwame and Pastor Helen Yosin and Dr. Alfred Patrick Adaku. We're talking about that one, there's a YouTube, <clears throat> some two massive YouTube songs on, on YouTube that came out of that particular broadcast. Find them and watch them on my YouTube channel. Um, a couple of music productions, extempo music productions that you will find very interesting on my YouTube channel, Albert Okran, singing with Ochami Kwame, Pastor Helen Yosin, and Alfred Patrick Adaku, including an end of year song you don't want to miss. Let's go for a break. When we come back, let's bring on the coach of the students, find out how to get more schools to appreciate science and technology and raise centers of excellence in those schools as well. Please don't go away. Are you a young person dealing with the disruptions caused by COVID-19 to our careers, education, health, and social lives? Welcome to the core program, an e-learning, e-mentoring, and e-counseling program designed to equip you with diverse skills to enable you to thrive now and even beyond this pandemic. We encourage you to download the video, audio, and workbook for each episode for free on the core program website, www.core.com.gh. If you are an MTN user in Ghana. You can download all videos, audios, or workbooks on our website without using your data. It's completely zero rated. And here's the bonus benefit. If you register on the website and go through a minimum of the 20 of the 24 sessions before the end of November, you will qualify for a certificate of completion from the core program. We would be very excited to hear from you. Post your questions and comments on our social media pages at core program or send them to us on the core WhatsApp hotline 551 Five three five five three three. Core learning together, growing together. Welcome back to Springboard, your virtual university. A conversation about the ideal Ghana, the final, the ninth and final edition. And I get to hang out with the Prisekans who stomped to the trophy for the National Science and Math Quiz in the studio. Daniel Gakpeto and Benjamin Kwanza, and I've been joined by the coach, Mr. Jidefu. Afram, did I get it right? Yes, sir. When I saw the writing of your name, I pronounced it with all vim, Jizifu, because in Fanti, we call Jizifu um, believers or believer, or okay. believers as, as it were. So I, I pronounced it that way till I, I, I met you and then I found out the pronunciation was different. Yes, what's, I like, I like ever Tiofro's names. What's the meaning of Jidefu? Uh, okay, Jidefu. Uh, may have different meanings depending on the context in which it is used. It may mean courage, or it can also mean believer. Wow. Oh, yeah, having a belief. Okay, so, so there's a correlation between yes. the fanti jizifu or yeah. believers and the ever jidefu. Yes. I love, I love ever names that have theophorus or godly interpretations. Okay, so let me start with you in this segment. How does it feel? Or how did it feel watching these young guys storm to the finals and win? I mean, I saw some of the celebrations. They were over the top. I mean, how did mm. it feel? Well, well, I feel good. I feel happy. Uh, I know that they are the hard, hard work, sacrifices from both students, from t students, teachers, even parents, management of the school, and all some old students who have come to help. I mean, all stakeholders who actually contributed to towards uh, this great victory. Uh, I mean, it's, it's refreshing. You know? I mean, we follow yeah. this National Science and Maths quiz right from the inception several years ago when it had a different identity till now that it has become not just a science and maths quiz for a particular brand, but the national event. And 
considering how it was some, some years ago, I mean, the difference is, is very serious. I mean, these days, it almost seems like the whole world comes to a standstill for the science and mass grades. How did it become so big? Well, I think, um, one, we have to... Uh, Prime Time has done a, a lot of work, you know, uh, because those days I was there in the early 2000s when we were taking the students to the science and math quiz, but there hasn't been that much of a, uh, the kind of energy we have and that it pulls, uh, and then interest it pulls from across the country and the globe as well. But I think, um, you know, uh, there's this kind of revolution, social media, and everything, which is due to science anyway. We have YouTube, we have uh, Facebook channels, we have WhatsApp, and all these people, I mean, a lot of groups, people discuss these things, people brag about it, and so there's that kind of, um, uh, uh, how do I call it, um, awareness created about the science and mass quiz. You see that even market women, I remember when we were at the Legon and we were going to the market to buy, you know, their food, the food market, and you see, they are, I mean, you hear them discussing, these old ladies discussing science and mass quiz, and I mean, I, I, I look at them and I say, wow, I mean, this has really gone far. So you think so, you democratized science and mass yes, and Yes, and I think the prime time, their social media handlers have done very well. In fact, their whole team, have done very well, but I think uh, the revolution in science and technology. Now we have Facebook, we have WhatsApp, uh, YouTube. I'm I sure think the students in the past those that, things that, that were not there. <laughs> they were not there. So now that these things are there, uh, I think it has created more awareness and has brought more people on board. Whatever they are, if you don't have a television, you can listen on YouTube or what or Facebook. Follow the channels and watch. I will come back to you to find out what it takes. The back, the back door. What you call you thought you spoke about the back door. I want to find out what it takes to groom students like this for a tournament, and how other schools that may not have the infrastructure or may not have the the reputation, the the old school network can also compete and participate. I know you it will feel as if you are sharing the Presec secret, but I believe it goes beyond Presec. I'm going to come back to you on that, but let me come to you, um, Benjamin. The moment when you knew you were going to win, how did it feel? <laughs> it was like everything was mixed feelings, yeah. Why? Hey, we've won. So this is the <laughs> hey, we've won. <laughs> <laughs> is it really real? Is this the end? <laughs> yes, that kind of feeling. Right. And Which school were you most scared of before the tournament? Before the tournament, it was Accra Academy. Really? Yeah. It wasn't Augusta School? Oh, no, no, no. Why? Because Accra Academy, we met them on several occasions during trials, and every time we meet them, the next time they get better, so they were getting better and better. But, and better. but you were beating them in the trials, <laughs> or they beat you once or twice. Oh, it was they beat us once, and then the rest we. So you're fearing them. Oh, they didn't know you were afraid of them. They didn't know. <laughs> we were not necessarily afraid of them, but we respected them a lot. All yeah. right. Uh, Daniel Gaquetto, you became very famous. I mean, I, I heard people in corporate offices discussing Gaquetto. It was a big conversation. How did your parents feel? People at home, how did they feel about you? They were very happy. Very happy for yeah, you? For me and... Did they do auto, auto for you? <laughs> <laughs> you? Do you know auto? No. You don't know auto? Oh, Mr. Mr. From, don't teach them only the science formula, so he doesn't know auto. Uh, eh? You don't know auto? No, please. Okay, let me, uh, how do you say it in a way? Auto. Uh, it's auto, it's auto. I guess. What shall he profit and money if he knows all the f science formulas and does not know auto? Auto is that thing that they do, mash, they mash yam and they add palm oil and put eggs on it. Yeah. Did they do something for you? No, please. Oh. <laughs> Your house is, is um, a problem home, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me, how did they, how, the, your newfound fame, how did it make you feel? Well, it was, I was happy about it, but... Um, it's you know, it's a strange feeling. It came with a very strange feeling because now it's like everyone, almost everyone knows you. And the moment you start talking, sometimes as soon as they see your face, they, they, they turn around and they're like, yeah, this is the like Gakweto. Oh, uh, <laughs> church, did they do a Thanksgiving service for you? Yes, the first Sunday I was home after the quiz, we, there was, uh, yeah, was it, so, was it the LIC one? No, please. 
Which of you went to LIC? Oh, okay, that, that was that was I think from one of the other schools. Which, which 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 did you go to? I or do you fellowship go to? at Living Word Sanctuary. It's right. In, yeah. Right. And they did a Thanksgiving service for you. Oh well, yes. And they prayed for you. It's, it's, and you felt very powerful. <laughs> yeah. Charlie, <laughs> did they do the Thanksgiving for you as well? Yes. Please. Which church? Church of Wow. Did they take offering for you? <laughs> oh. oh no offering. Oh, they should have added offering. <laughs> Oh, I'll tell your pastor next time she had a friend. They but, threw a party for me. A party? Yeah. Uh, Mr. From, this science and mass thing, science and mass question, it has become the reason why they even sack headmasters. Hmm. When the schools, it's serious, when the schools don't yeah. do well, I can never see the next year to become even bigger. I mean, yeah. but let's speak to the schools that are less, the, the deprived schools that are less endowed. Give them an idea about what it takes. Some say, I hear they start selecting the students from first year and start grooming them for, for years. Is, is it the case? Oh, yes. Well, I think um, most schools do that now. Um, so that the students at least, so that they can, I mean, they can cover much more. Uh, if, if not, the entire syllabus before the competition starts. So almost all of them do that. Um, I mean, some school, it depends, you know, every school that needs two students or maximum three who represent the school if they, if they should do a substitution. So uh, getting those three is, uh, I mean, I'm sure every school can get three brilliant students because of the way the placements are. Most so right from the, you're good. seeing the right from form one, look for three sharp science students. Is that what you're seeing? Uh, normally picking three right from the beginning will be, uh, I will not encourage that because uh, if you pick three from the beginning, you have already limited the number. There may be students who will improve as you move along. Okay. So most important thing is to get a couple of them that are very good and continue to engage them. And then as time goes on, we can trim down the numbers. And, you send, and then you can come to the final. So make it like, six, make it like six or six ten? Or, yeah, six or okay. ten. Okay. And yes. then keep your eye on them. Do yes. you give them special treatment? Do you... Do you Give them special diet. Do you take them on extra classes? Do they, they give you a, a special food? You are still slim like that. <laughs> uh, I, I hear in some schools they have a special a special place where they sleep and everything. Uh, yes. Can, can, can reveal the secrets uh, for our school. Uh, well, our team uh, we don't pamper them too much. Okay. Some schools do a lot of pampering. Uh, if and you pamper students too much, you make their steady place too comfortable, they'll use it to sleep. Really? Yes. Yeah, so hey. if you come to our steady place, you watch it, and you'll be wondering, is this the place? Because people have some things in their mind, that you sometimes a mask is where they prep. I mean, it's, it's a very, I mean, uh, well-equipped, I mean, they have that kind of very comfortable place, but, you know, uh, the most important thing is not, not so much about those comfort and the rest, but it's about um, so both students and teachers putting in their best. Because I always hear out of schools that are supposedly like low schools, performing schools, and then every time, hey, you Persec, we hear that, oh, you people, you are being well taken care of, you are on special diet, you are on special salary, you know, your quiz room is well stocked with facilities, I mean, state of the apt equipment, value. It's not it's about like that. that. Right. Uh -huh. Because all that the student needs is books to learn. A few things like computer and yeah, things that they can so use. So let me let me resources. let me drill down your points. First of all, you're saying select early. Select early. Don't select just three. Select a few more and then and then begin to work with them and then yeah. you trim down as you go. Yeah. The second thing you are saying is that there must be um you must engage the syllabus early so you try and complete the entire syllabus with them, correct? Yes. Wonderful. And you're saying they will need books? Yeah. And they will need, need computers? Yes, as well, yes. What about internet connection? Oh, yeah, yeah. Data yeah, as well? Yeah, you need internet connection, data. Or you have to definitely go online to read. Yes. Okay. And the yeah. students made a point earlier on about some of the things going on YouTube and websites and finding that some of the there are easier ways, smarter ways, more exciting ways to the same things that they learn. Do you encourage them to be exploratory in their outlook? Oh yes. Uh, Sometimes some some of the things that I 
I mean, as for me, is and our team is like students and teachers learning together. Sometimes we learn from our students. I'm, we have a way of I'm glad doing to hear something, that. and then the students come back and say, "We can do it this way." I remember there was one time there was a student behind them. I gave a questionnaire. I didn't even land, and the student that gave the answer, and even they and the, he's behind them, and then all of us were surprised. At how did you solve this? Then he told us how he went about it, and I said, "Wow!" So quickly, the question that I put there, I I I, I put another <laughs> alternative solution there. You see, so we must encourage our students to explore, to be inquisitive, and uh, to be innovative. It takes so, humility to say what you are saying, that the students yeah. are so determined that sometimes you find out that they even go ahead of ahead, their teachers yes. in some of the subject areas. Yes, wow. Wow. That's very interesting. Let me come to, to, to you, Daniel Gagpeto. It, it is, I think that the quiz mistress herself alluded to the fact that the final questions were um, more difficult. And she said, how else, how else will you know that you're in the final? I hear those questions were university questions. Is it true? I, I don't think they are university questions, but they are not questions you would find in uh, you. There, some of them were on concepts you may not find in some of our uh, textbooks that we use. We normally use in our schools. Sometimes you need to do some extra reading from the internet on topics that are related to what we learn in school, but not exactly what we treat with our teachers. So mostly, when you do this extra reading, that's when you'll be able to come across some of those things, but not necessarily what you learn in the university. Benjamin, is it possible for somebody to spend so much time preparing for national science and math quiz that they would flop in their main educational work? It's possible. Well, you see, the quiz goes beyond what we actually learn in school. And for the quiz, there's no English, there's no social studies, and those kind of things. So if you focus... I like, I like you call it those kind of things. I was in science now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you focus so much on the quiz and you are preparing, you might, you might do the very well in the quiz and win, but maybe the English and the social, yeah, you might not... Do too well. Too, yeah. how, so how do you find the balance? Yeah, you, um, you see, maybe when you're learning chemistry in your timetable, then you do it for both the WASI and the quiz. Then you find special time for the English and the social so that you don't lack in any of the areas. Are your results out? Yes, please. How did it go? <laughs> it was great. Tell me yours, tell me yours. <laughs> Announce it on national radio. How did it go? It went well by God's grace. Yes, my name is by God's grace. He hints me small. <laughs> How good was the world? Very good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Daniel, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell, okay. tell me. I'll whisper it in my ears. I, I had all E's. You had all E's? Yes, please. Charlie Springboard would be a person. <laughs> you had all E's? Yes, please. Wow. Let, let's clap for you. Come on. Come on. Well done, well done, well done. Charlie, are you a shark? <laughs> I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Benjamin, how did it go? It was also great. Also great? Yeah. How did it go? <laughs> I also had all A's. All A's? <laughs> how do you get all A's? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let's clap, let's clap, let's clap. Charlie, my, my, my guest had all A's. I feel like announcing a woman number for you to send the money to just encourage young people. Hi! All A's. Charlie, Mr. Fram, well done. Thank you. Well done. I know there are other teachers, but it's, I think you should clap for mm -hmm. your coach. I, I, I think so. I really think so. I really think so. So this is the special edition of the, not the National Science and Mass Quiz, this is a special edition of Springboard your Virtual University on my ideal gun. And we are talking about the expectations of these young people who are the ambassadors of the National Science and Mass Quiz, having won the most recent one, Benjamin Kwanza and Daniel Gapeto. Let me once again salute their two colleagues um, who are not here, Isaac Jimfi and then Faith Cyril, um, who were part of the team of four, but who are not here. Uh, that's a fair one. Let's just um, remember them, their effort as well. But we are finding out from you the ideal Ghana you'd like to see if there were no inhibitions. And we also are joined by Mr. Afram, who is their coach, helping us to understand what it takes to build capacity uh, for science and maths in your school. And he says, first, select, select students early, 
to go at the syllabus and then encourage them to go beyond it to be inquisitive and bold and courageous that's his name courage and then get them books get them computers get them data and internet connection and then work with them every step of the way and he says if you're a teacher be prepared for a situation where the students will overtake you in their learning and don't feel embarrassed go with them and go with the flow let me come back and and wrap up with your ideal Ghana, Mr. Afram. Let me give you one, one hit. What would you like to see? And particularly in the area of science and maths, because that's your field, that's your baby. What would you like yeah. to see across the country in the area of science and maths, yeah, I, science and technology? Yeah, I feel um, everything I, about a, a state comes down to education, being it sanitation, being it... Um, uh, governance and leadership, being it uh, uh, youth and sport, employment issues, health matters, they, they all come down to uh, the issue of education. When people are given proper education, uh, and, uh, and education is in, uh, globally competitive, I don't think we have any issue with uh, unemployment. So I feel that our education Place a very, very, I, I can put that one as the, the one on top, uh, the umbrella on top from which we can uh, we can draw from the others. So I, I want to see our education always not being static, but always um, evolving to, uh, to, I mean, to be aligned with uh, the global trends, uh, development in technology, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Okay, so, and, and now uh, in science, technology, engineering, STEM is the one that is, is what is propelling the, the, the global economy. So if you want our economy to, uh, to move very fast, we want our economy to grow, then I feel, I think our leaders and we all, all as a whole, we need to embrace science, uh, uh, science, technology education, and mathematics education. Right. Yeah. So basically, and uh, we can do that by creating the awareness and the interest among children, even from f when they are very young. And, and also, that also puts the honors on teachers to make these areas very, very interesting. Because if I am a math teacher, most people that I encounter that they didn't like math. When I begin math and science to explore, then I, I realized that, well, they had issue with the one who taught them. Uh, yeah. yeah. So the teacher makes it very. Uh, uh, like a fearful subject, a no-go area, and oh, for that matter, one. some of them lose their interest very early. But right. I feel young people should be encouraged to embrace science and mathematics education, and also they should be made to be aware that they have what it takes to do science and mathematics and all those areas, technology, they have what it takes, and there's, there's great prospects. In fact, people would think there's no money in science, science and mathematics, those areas, but I can tell you, those, those are the areas that the are making there. money now. Okay. Yes, when this COVID came, right. um, Zoom alone, um, we are told Zoom made far, their, their, their net worth was more than seven major airlines put together. Right. And, and that is science and technology. Excellent. Yes. Mr. Gidefu Afram is the coach of the winning team from Presec for the National Science and Maths Quiz. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Thank you. Let me come to you, Benjamin Kwanza, for your closing thoughts. And I'd like to find out what you will do, what you personally will do. Your ideal Ghana, you want learning to be always current, the notes not to be outdated. You want science and tech to be more exciting for everyone. And you also want to see healthcare driven by passion and not fame. What will you do personally to make this kind of ideal Ghana possible going into the future? What will be your contribution? My contribution? Yes. Well, I feel my contribution will be much felt where I am, as in my career. Right. So I think I'll be able to affect the healthcare area more. Yeah. So what I plan to do, um, make it more driven by passion and not by fame. I think I'll be able to do that because that's where I'll be. By God's grace. Yeah. By God's grace. Yeah. May the Lord help you to achieve your aspirations. And yeah. may you be the kind of doctor that will that will win Nobel Prize for science. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Benjamin Kwanza, Presec National Science and Maths Team 2020, joining us in the studio. Final thoughts go to you, Daniel Gakpeto. 
what would you contribute to building the ideal Ghana? Your ideal Ghana, we should adjust our curriculum and make science more applicable and current at all times. You're saying that we should, the environment must make, make it more lucrative for people to practice science and maths here with more incentives, so we import less and produce more. And then you are saying that we should be more competitive in science, in sports, across various disciplines. UMB was established in 1972 as the premier bank for the corporate and private sector in Ghana. From our very beginning, as the only Ghanaian bank serving all categories of businesses, we set a standard for excellence and innovation over the past 45 years. We've built a financially healthy and strong bank, demonstrated our commitment to our customers and to growing businesses, and exhibited originality and innovation at every turn. At UMB, our focus is built around people, service, products and technology. These are the key to our present success and our future triumphs. At UMB, we are poised to make a difference not only with our customers, but also in the banking industry. We invite you to share in our future. Our future starts now with you. Aha, uh -huh, Auntie Mary, give me for full 10 cities, Willie 6 cities, goat's meat, apapo, 12 cities, and chicken ties, fat one, 8 cities. Okay, right away. Sauce Kaneke, payday is good. Hard beer, one wine. In the hustle and bustle of life, retirement consideration. Next year. Are often relegated to the bottom of our collective financial agenda. Until retirement hits you unprepared, living on a mega retirement income can be traumatic and stressful. Can I have Fufu 50 pesos and chicken ties small 50 pesos? Hey, please, we don't sell our dule and our chomo here. Oh. Hey, I do ya wow. Contact us for details. Terms and conditions apply. Access Pension Trust, your reliable partner in pension. What will be your contribution to building this ideal Ghana? Daniel Gapito. My contribution to building this ideal Ghana would be, first of all, as a citizen, um, I feel that some of these things, it's these goals that we are to achieve, they, are, they, will be, they could be achieved by collective efforts, not necessarily an individual. So mainly by collaborating with whoever I can collaborate with, people I can talk to in order to make these ideas um, a possibility. And also in any way that I can support, maybe money, uh, in terms of money or, <laughs> well, um, yes. Uh, for he instance- wants, He wants to be a doctor, medical doctor. Did you tell us what you wanted to be? Yeah, I want to go into electrical engineering. Electrical engineering, yes, that's interesting. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Right. So you will make a contribution in that field. Yes, please, in the field. Uh, right. Yeah. Let me say a big thank you to you, Mr. From um, Benjamin Kwanza and Daniel Gapeta for joining us on Springboard, your virtual investor. A big congratulations from Team Springboard for, for making all of us very proud. And uh, I'm sure we'll have a, a small celebration after we go off air, but we are so proud of the achievements of this team, this preset team, we're proud of this trophy. Let's take a, let's sugar and take a, a picture by the trophy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like this, sugar like this, yeah. All right, so it's just a celebration of achievement and just encouraging these young people that, listen, it starts from now and they can get big, they can do big things for the nation and for the continent going forward. Next week, Sunday, the 6th of December, it will, there will be no show on Springboard because we would make way for the national conversation preceding the election the next day. But when we come back on the 13th of December, it's going to be a big show as we review the year 2020 and forecast into the year 2021 here on Springboard, your virtual university. But this is the end of our series on My Ideal Gun. I hope that over these nine different conversations, you've gleaned some very useful thoughts about how Ghana could be if we apply ourselves, and you also have written down your own thoughts about the ideal Ghana. Let's continue the conversation on social media. But in the meantime, on behalf of Team Springboard, led by Comfort, God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you.
so 